In 2007, Frontline broadcast a film called Growing Up Online. You need to have the internet on to talk to your friends because everybody uses it. You can be more crazy online because there's no one watching to see what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what she was doing on the internet. That was a big surprise. But today, it's not just our kids. All of us are immersed in technology all the time. This is a digital moment in my life. From multitasking... Multitasking could be essentially dumbing down the world. ...to the military. It is a complete cultural change for the Air Force. In work. I mean, you've all met in real life at one point, right? Actually, no. And at play. The first hour, I was hooked. I would play literally nonstop. And on the virtual frontier. The question is, are we entering a new paradigm? Or is this just the next best thing? That's OK. They're not in the real world. I think that you will live in the virtual world a significant percentage of the time. Tonight, Frontline producer Rachel Dretson and correspondent Douglas Rushkoff look at the wired world we're living in, our new digital nation. I kind of want to push the pause button, and everything stops, and we can look and say, just what's going on here? So, it really hit me one night not that long ago. I was in the kitchen, and I was cooking dinner, chopping vegetables, and my husband was in the next room on his laptop. And across the table from my husband was my oldest son, who was also on a laptop doing his homework. Wash your hands. Did you wash your hands? And my younger kids had picked up my iPhone and were playing a game on it or something. No, no, no. And uh, I don't know. It just hit me. We're all in the same house, but we're also in other worlds. And uh, I don't know. It just kind of snuck up on us. I didn't see it coming. These young teenagers on the phones and on the computers is amazing. Like, when I was growing up, it wasn't like that. I just remember when I went on my honeymoon 25 years ago, we were away for two weeks and we didn't know anything that happened in the two weeks that we were gone because we were on vacation. And that simply doesn't happen anymore. We now have these tools to reach so many people. And all of a sudden we look around and say, well, you know, now what? Well over half my life exists in the digital world. I'm connected to my Blackberry. I need it at all times. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine not having it. I use my phone. I go on MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, everything. <laughs> That's my digital life. This is the first place. This is where it all began. This is the first college where they When I started this project, looking at life in the digital age, the first person I turned to was my friend Douglas Rushkoff, whom I've worked with on two previous films. Doug's been writing about the internet for close to two decades. Well, geeks are normal now. You know? It's true. We're we decided to start here, on the campus of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge. If anyone is a new species of digital native, it would be a, the MIT student. I mean, These kids are among the smartest, most wired people on the planet right now. They may hardly remember a time when they weren't able to be online anywhere they went. I have three tests this week. Everywhere you go on this campus, kids are looking at screens, sometimes multiple screens. I was productive on Saturday. Friday. Take Eliza. She's 20, a mechanical engineering major, and completely wired all the time. Is it going to stay in beta for as long as Gmail stayed in beta? Like a decade? I have a few friends who, if they hear the word Blackberry, they think of me. Like, I am never off of it. It is glued to me. When it's more than arm's length for me, I start to get panicky. It's very disconcerting. Are we Gchat buddies? Can I just... I I'm always IMing or texting or things like that. Always checking my phone, taking care of other things while I'm doing something else. You are talking to your friend at the same time you're talking to your other friend, at the same time you're emailing another friend about what you're going to do tomorrow night. Dude, classes here aren't fun, man. We kind of understand that, too, between each other. We're all so busy that it's OK if I'm talking to Murph right now and his Blackberry goes off and he has to start going on it. I'm like, well, that's OK, because I'm going to do that to him anyways. So you just it's a mutual understanding. The school, I think, is just kind of the same. Like, you're paying attention in class with your professor, you're emailing another professor, and you're looking at something else. Nobody who's been teaching for 25 years would say that our students aren't different now than they were then. I mean, they need, they need to be stimulated in ways they didn't need to be stimulated before. 